2008 unibody MacBook CPU heatsink replacement and cleaning. Make sure that the MacBook is shut down and let's start off by flipping it over. Press in the battery cover latch and remove the panel. Next remove the battery. There are 8 screws that are holding in the bottom case panel. We'll start off by removing the top 4 screws. The first screw is the short screw and the next 3 screws are long screws. On the bottom of the panel there are 4 distinctly small screws. Let's go ahead and remove those and that will release the bottom panel. Once the 8 screws have been removed that are holding down the panel, gently grip it up in the top and remove it out of the way. Gently push your fingers outwards and the memory module should pop right up. The fan is located in the top center of the MacBook and is attached with 3 Phillips head screws. You can go ahead and unscrew those screws but leave them in place as it will be easier when you lift the fan up not to get the screws mixed up with other screws. Gently slide the screwdriver underneath the fan connector and pry up on it gently removing the connection out of its socket. Disconnect the LVDS cable first. Go ahead and disconnect the speaker, followed by the EyeSight and the Wi Fi cable. Next, the DVD Super Drive cable and the SATA hard disk cable. The next cable is going to have an eyelash. Gently lift it up with your fingernail. Use your screwdriver to help you pry it out. This is your LED indicator light cable. Now your trackpad cable. Lift up the eyelash on the keyboard connection. Use a screwdriver to help you pry out the keyboard connection. Now you can remove the shield that guards the trackpad and the keyboard connection. It's connected with two Phillips head screws. Next we're going to disconnect the battery meter. Now let's disconnect the battery connection to the logic board. Now we can remove the LVDS cable bracket. It's connected with two Phillips head screws. The next step is very important. The microphone is glued to the case. We're going to use a pair of tweezers to pry out the microphone and relieve it from the glue. Now pry back the cables and starting with the closest screw to the fan, remove the five Phillips head screws that are holding down the logic board. Gently lift up the logic board, pulling it up and to your left at the same time. 
you can now flip it over but it still has two connections on the rear side be careful disconnect the DC in power board The logic board is now free to come out. Start by removing the four Phillips head screws that surround the heatsink. Disconnect the heatsink temperature sensor. Lift up the heatsink, flip it around, and wipe off any remaining dry thermal paste that's left on the heatsink. Do the same for the CPU and the GPU chips on the logic board. Make sure to go over it multiple times and wipe off any thermal residue that's left over. Apply new thermal paste compound both on the CPU and the GPU. Please make sure not to put more than two drops worth on each chip. Lay down the heat sink on the new place thermal compound, making sure not to smear the compound all over the CPU diodes. Screw it in with the four Phillips head screws, making sure that you don't screw it in too tight. Make sure not to forget the heatsink temperature sensor. If you fail to reconnect this, your fan will be running at full speed. Reconnect the DC inboard power connector. While moving all the cables out of the way, drop the logic board in, making sure that no connections are trapped. Quickly check all your connections, the battery meter, the battery charger, the keyboard, the trackpad, the LED light, the SATA drive, the super drive, and the EyeSight and Wi-Fi camera, as well as the speaker. Carefully tuck in your battery charging cable. Then make sure that your battery indicator cable is also plugged in. Reattach the five Phillips head logic board screws again starting with the closest one to the fan. Reattach the LVDS cable bracket with two Phillips head screws. Now reattach the LVDS cable, making sure that it's in snug and closing it with its latch.
reconnect the speaker followed by the eyesight and the Wi-Fi cable now the super DVD drive next the SATA cable for the hard drive lift up the latch and reattach the LED light cable push down the latch reconnect the trackpad get a pair of tweezers to help you pry in the keyboard cable make sure that the latch is up this can take practice in several attempts make sure not to scratch up the keyboard cable with the tweezers place the fan back into its socket and screw it down with three Phillips head screws you can now reconnect the fan cable gently push it in until you hear a click place the RAM module at a 45 degree angle now gently press down on it until you hear it firmly click place the bottom case panel in the same manner that it was removed gently pressing down on it making sure that no cable connections are being pinched off reinstall the top four screws starting with a shorter top left screw and next the three longer screws now reinstall the four smaller bottom screws for the panel this will finish attaching the panel place the battery back into its socket now place the battery cover on top make sure to use the battery cover latch to firmly lock it in place <laughs> 